So we are on our second day of this systematic treatment of equilibrium on Smith's five-step process. So we'll do all five steps today. And we are going to start out with the assignment, the homework. If you look at the schedule, it says that what's due is problem 8-20 in the back of the book, and then EX2 through EX5 on the handout. So here we go. Here's our EX2 through EX5. Okay, so we're just going to work on the homework. So we'll start with EX2. So I copied and pasted it here. So we have our five steps, and then it says use a systematic treatment of equilibrium to determine the concentrations of all species present in 7 times 10 to the negative 8 molar HCl. Well, Jeff, before we go through all this work, why is this a problem that deserves an exact solution? You know what I mean? Because this is something where, you know, we're, we're not making any assumptions. We're solving for these things exact. What? So you're asking, like, why? Why do we have to go through all this? Why can't we just, because we know what kind of, what kind of acid is that? Strong acid. So what's the problem? Very well said. You understand what you're saying? Just the autoprotolysis of water alone is going to give you 10 to the negative 7 molar H plus. So we're talking about very, very dilute acid solution. So yeah, this is all this is awfully extreme, but this is more real worldish kind of stuff. So we can't just say the hydrogen ion concentration is 7 times 10 to the negative 8 and move on. No, life is more complicated. It has more than, hydrogen ion has more than one source. So that's why this is a problem. OK. So let's go ahead and let's start with step number one. Jackie, step number one. What are all the pertinent chemical species in this solution? Here's our solution. Cl minus. H plus. H plus. Is that it? She didn't say what, good thank goodness. She didn't she did not say H C L. Thank goodness, right? Because strong acid, that's not a species that you should be picking. All right, let's just leave it at that. See if we can add some to our list. The next Ida is write any KW, KA, or KSP expressions for the stuff that we wrote. So can we write any of these? We can write a K, KA. Now KA can only be written for what type of acid? Weak acid. So we can't write a KA. Otherwise, that'd be a good guess. KW, KW, because you see H plus, you have to write KW. So, oh, now we have to do what to our list, Sabina, of our chemical species. Add OH minus. No biggie, no biggie. Okay. Gloria are there any other K A K W K A or K S P expressions? Ooh, how about a K not K A but K K B. Chloride's the conjugate base. But there's no K B expression for it. Why? It's, a, it's definitely a conjugate base of HCl. Why is it impossible to write a K B expression? It's a base. No one's arguing it's a conjugate base. But you can't write a KB for it. The same reason why there was no KA for HCl, right? If HCl is a strong acid. If HCl is a strong acid, you can't form it. Because if you're going to write a KB expression for Cl minus, you have to form its conjugate acid, HCl. And that's impossible. It ain't going to happen. So if there's no KA, then there's no KB either. So well, we're about done. But that leaves us, Kelly, for step. So I'd say we're done with those two. How about step three? Charge balance. What could you write for that? Well, 
all the what on what side? And all the all the positive ones on one side. We're not, we're not supposed to say positive ones. We're supposed to say starts with a C. Cations, right? All the cations on one side and all the anions on the other. And make sure we multiply their concentrations by their charge. Right. Okay, so let's put all the H pluses, sorry, all the cations over here. It doesn't matter where. All the anions over here. Okay, so things have to be balanced charge wise. Okay, so Danielle. Charge balance, I think, is done, right? We just took a look at all of our species present and wrote all the cations on one side, anions on the other. That leaves mass balance. Can we write any mass balance? Hey, before we write mass balance, it's always kind of confusing to me, Danielle. Let's see if we're done. How many unknowns do we have? Three. How many equations do we have? Two. Two. So we, do we have to write a mass balance? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what could it be? Now, when you write mass balance, Ricky, you're on to something. But remember, when you write mass balance, this is why it's, it's always kind of confusing. What you do is you say, remember, we don't mess with hydrogen ion or hydroxide because they have more than one source, right? So pretty much the only guy you're looking at is Cl. So you say the concentration of chlorine in all its forms has to equal has to equal 7 times 10 to the negative 8. So how many forms of chloride or chlorine are there? There's only one. Now because if you you would like to say HCl also, but remember HCl is a strong acid. It doesn't exist, right? So you, it's not even in our list of compounds. So you look up there and see, hey, where's chlorine show up? Well, it only shows up if it's chloride. So what you said, Ricky, is your mass balance expression. Concentration, chlorine in all its forms has to be 7 times 10 to the negative 8. OK. Andy, I don't know how many years ago it was this. Remember the game plan on this sort of thing? What did you do? Well, hang on, hang on. Before you write more equations, do we, how many unknowns do we have? We have one. Two, we have three unknowns, right? Do we have three equations? Yeah. yeah. We have equation one, equation two, equation three. So what I was what I was trying to get at, Andy, is it's kind of like when we had, I don't know what they called this, like 3x squared plus y equals 6. 4x minus 2 equals z. Z equals 12 plus y. Remember, we have three equations, three unknowns. And you had to solve this. There was some method to the madness. What was? What did you do? Solve one for one. Okay, hey, we got this one done. Okay, so he's done. What could we do now? Good. Solve for either the hydronium or the hydroxide, and then do what? Then plug that into the other equation. Do you see the game plan? Remember doing this? So what? What she's saying is, uh, let's just pick one. Let's solve solve two for hydrogen ion, right? In other words, substitute three into two. That'd probably be a better idea. That probably sounds better. Substitute two. Sorry, substitute three into two. Okay. 
substitute 3 into 2. Right? And then we'll have a new equation. I guess you can call it equation 4 or something if you want to keep track of all this stuff. And then we'll substitute 4 into 1. Because when you do that, you'll have one equation with one unknown in it. Okay. So let's substitute 3 into 2. What we're saying is, is put that 7 times 10 negative 8 in for the chlorine. So we'd have hydrogen ion equals 7 times 10 to the negative 8 plus hydroxide. And then substitute this new equation we got, we call it number 4, substitute that into number 1. It's like, oh, how could I forget her name? Kim, what? Kimberly. Kimberly Guillen. Right? Just like Kimberly was saying, right? Because now we have hydrogen ion solved for, let's substitute it into the other one, she said. So well, I kind of numbered them to keep them straight. So the other one is number 1. We already messed with number two. You can't mess with it again. If you do, you'll get one equals one or some silly thing. So we substitute back into number one, and then we'll have one expression with just hydroxide in it. And it's going to be a what equation? So the Q. Quadratic. Right? It's going to be a quadratic equation. <laughs> right? So we substitute four into, so we'll have one times 10 to the negative 14 equals hydrogen ion, which is 7 times 10 to negative 8 plus hydroxide. All right? Isn't that my hydrogen ion? Yeah. And then I have to multiply it times hydroxide. So you should have got that. Okay. And remember they call this a quadratic equation because you're going to have something squared in it plus some other stuff. Right? And then there was an there was a relationship. Who remembers this? You wanted it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals, remember the quadratic equation? ax squared plus bx plus c has to equal zero. zero. Has to equal zero. So a, b, and c are your coefficients, right? x is your variable. So in our case, our x is going to be what in this expression? Hydroxide concentration. So hydroxide concentrations are x. So we need to rearrange this so we get it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And then once we do that, the solution to all quadratic equations was, did this get burned into your head? Yeah, the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus. Oh, yeah, you guys did this. Over 2a, good. So you get two answers. One's going to be nonsensical, right? Because you do find out what your coefficients are, then plug them into your quadratic formula. Okay? And you're going to get two answers, one by adding the square root, the other one by subtracting. So you probably get a negative answer for one. but. This is what we got to get. That's our, that's our goal. So rearrange this equation, I guess, 5, right? Rearrange equation 5 to get it in the form of our quadratic equation there, ax squared plus bx plus c.
Okay, so I have my little A, B, and C here. See if you got the same ones. My little A is 1. B is 7 times 10 to the negative 8. C is a negative 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Right? Does that make sense what I did? So I just had to rearrange it so it looked like 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So whatever's in front of the hydroxide is going to be my a. It doesn't have to be 1. It could have been anything. That's going to be my a. Whatever's in front of my hydroxide to the 1 power will be my b. And whatever I'm adding or subtracting at the end will be my c. Let's see, I think I gave the answers here. Yeah, hopefully you get these answers. So about, when you solve for your x, your x is your what concentration? OH, your x is your hydroxide concentration. So when you solve that, hydro that quadratic formula, you're solving for the hydroxide concentration. Then you got to hope, and hopefully for, for that, you will get 1.41 times 10 to the negative 7 for the hydroxide. Okay? If you did the quadratic formula right, you should end up getting your x, which is your hydroxide, to be 1.41 times 10 to the negative 7. And then you go pick any equation with hydroxide in it and solve for hydrogen ion. Are you getting it to work? The answers are on your sheet. I might have typed it in wrong. What are you getting for your quadratic? Oh, so this one is supposed to say hydroxide, is what you're saying. It's a typo? It very well could be. Because if you got 7.095 to 10 negative 8, what are the odds? You did? Yeah. Well, then, what well, the heck? Can you divide it by 2? Yeah. Now, you're using, for, for the one me and Melissa got, you're using 7 times 10 to the negative 8 for your B, right, Melissa? And for C, you're using... Yeah, that's right. You should be getting 1.41 times 10 to negative 7. You realize you're messing up. Hydrogen ion is 7.095 times 10 to negative 8. But you should get something really close. It might be rounding or something. But. Oh, come on. That's just rounding. Someone, you're, someone's carrying a different number of digits. Either I am or you are. Because when you, when you solve for your hydroxide and get this 1.41 times 10 negative 7, the one that you're going to have to pick is the plus. 
Because a minus one is going to give you a negative answer. You can't have a negative concentration. So to get this to work, you're going to be picking the plus. Make sure you can get this. I'm going to go through all this work and then not get it. Okay, let's, let's write it out and not skip anything here. Let's write it all out. So uh, does everyone agree with the 2.118 times 10 negative 7? Yes. All right. Probably just screwing up somewhere here. Then you have to add that to 7 times 10 negative 8. Negative. It has to be negative, though. So what are you getting as an answer? 7.2 Yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> what is it? Because it wasn't divided by 2. Uh, so I got to change this. I, was, I thought I was helping you by writing down answers, but I wasn't. Oh, that's, oh, I see it's right here. So this, is, this guy should probably be hydroxide, right? I bet you that's where it's messed up. So your hydrogen ion, does that come out to be 1.41 times 10 negative 7? So plug in, now you know what hydroxide is. You can pick any equation, like pick equation 1 or equation 2. Equation 1 looks kind of easier, I guess. I don't know, they're all the same. Well, that's all still messed up, isn't it? Son of a buck. Really? 1.409 to negative 7. That's where you got it? So if I take negative 8. one point four one to negative 7. Yeah, they are turned around. Right? Aren't they turned around? The hydrogen ion in my little solutions here where I was trying to help you. Hydrogen ion is supposed to be 1.41 times 10 to the negative 7. Hydroxide is 7.09 times 10 to the yes. negative 8. I got, sir, I got my answer is matched up to the hydrogen ion. They weren't switched. That's what happens. Like I got hydrogen ion equals 7.095 times 1.19. Really? How can we have so much trouble even in the quadratic equation? Do we, did you agree with this? Yes. 
All right. So you take 7 times 10 to the negative 8. Add that to get that divided by two. Subhomogeneous. I I think you're doing something wrong. How it looks good. Did you get that, Doctor Smith? I'm getting with these guys switched. That's what I'm getting. We solve for x. So when we solve, when we solve down here, our x is our hydroxide. So when we solve for it, I get 7.09 times 10 negative 8 for hydroxide. Done it three times. So if you can get this to work, go on and try the rest of the homework. It said EX, what was the next one? It said EX3 or something. EX3, EX4, and EX5. I think they're switched. Yeah. Yeah, hydrogen ion should be 1.41 to 10 negative 7. Oh, it doesn't matter. They're all, all equations are valid. So you substitute in the one that's the easiest. For me, since the answer is already in my calculator, I just use this one because then I just push the 1 over x button and multiply it times 1 times 10 negative 14. You'd what? Oh. Oh, so you need the you need this. So this should be hydrogen ion. And this should be hydroxide. So in the next one, again, do systematic treatment to find the concentrations of all species present in A. Then do the same thing for B. Turn what? Ah? I think all I can do is like that. So try to set up these in the leg. I'm here to help you out if you have a question. I don't know.
So in, in A, if you turn this in, in A, there's A. So this is EX3. And I think this is EX4. So, EX3 is A and EX4 is B. As long as you didn't finish, if you're if you finished it now, I won't accept it. It was already done. All right, all right. We're taking you on the on the honesty rule. Because then you get points. You'll have to. Oh, I found it. I don't think you need to worry about whether it's turned in or not. Okay, you guys know how to do A, EX3, no problem. Danielle, you know what you're doing? No? So when we did, when you set up part A, right, you identified all the species. Pretty much, you did this one and you did that one. So that was it, right? Hopefully no one wrote HNO3. Those are our species. And then we went down and you could do, uh, there's no KA, KBs, KSPs, or nothing. Okay. Remember those solubility rules that the only ones that I really stress yeah. is what were the anions that you could put with anything and would always be 100% soluble? In other words, you can't write a KSP for it. What were the anions? Nitrate, Nitrate and? What's this? Acetate. acetate. Nitrate and acetate. And then there were some cations you put with anything. Always dissolved. There's no KSP for it. All the alkali metals, group one. So if you remember that, that will help you write these guys. OK? So nitrate's there. You're, you're done. Charge balance. So Mel, what's wrong with my charge balance? There's, there's two, strontium. two strontium. Good. Okay. And then a mass balance. What would be a mass balance? You could write concentration, concentration of strontium. 2.8 molar. Concentration, so strontium in all its forms has to be 2.8 molar. Nitrate in all of its forms has to be 5.6, which is kind of redundant for what we said up here. But we have two equations, two unknowns, you're done. There's not a whole lot to do for full systematic treatment. Okay. 
There will be for EX4, though, for B. So identify all of the species present. All right. Do we write PBCL2 solid as a species? No, right? They're, they're things that don't show up in equilibrium constant expressions, we don't show up. I mean, their concentrations are constant. Okay. So hopefully you wrote like PB plus 2, CL minus. Was there anything else that you wrote? Was that it for the species? Ricky, were there any other species? Besides that one? Besides these two. Yeah. I don't believe so. All right. If you could write, if, H if HCl was a weak acid, you'd have a whole bunch more to write. You'd have the weak acid, you'd have H plus, you'd have OH minus, but it's not. So we're done. So then you can write your KSP expression. Yep. Is there a reason you don't do a KSP expression for a strong one? Yeah, because of this. That's why it's such a big deal. Oh, such a big deal. And because it, I guess you have to know when to look up the darn KSP, right? Because the homework may not give you the KSP. So I think this rule will knock it out. All nitrates and acetates. And then all group ones. You're never going to look up a KSP. You said ammonia last class. Oh, yeah, ammonium. Thank you. I forgot about that one. NH4 plus. Thank you. We need one more equation. Because we, we have two, equa two unknowns, but only one equation. Yeah, that's the what balance. It's the, it's the what balance. It's the, you look at that as mass balance? It's charge balance. It stares at me as charge balance. But I guess technically it could be a mass balance too if you can figure it that way. But that's it. Two equations, two unknowns. You can solve that in theory. Chloride is 2B plus 2, so just substitute that into this one. Make sure you square it, though, because it's chloride squared, right? It's chloride squared, so make sure you square this when you put it in there. EX3, EX4. B. Is there anything to solve for EX? Uh, for, A? for this one? Yeah. Well, strontium's done. You just need, you need to find what nitrate is. Pretty much just multiply strontium by 2 and you're done. You want to give the molarity for everything. Mm -hmm. Or when you input the um, 2PB squared, yeah. so it's going to make it 4PB, but yeah. it's still keeping that squared. But it's going to be PB. You're going to have a squared here. But it's really, it's going to end up being cubed, won't it? Right. Yeah, yeah it's gonna, you're going to end up taking the cube root to get your answer here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, you're going to have to divide that 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5, divide it by 4, then take the cube root. Then you'll have your lead, and then substitute into like equation 2 and get your chloride. No, I shouldn't even have an answer for the first one. I just messed it up. I'm going to add an EX6, and that's just solve D. D. There's not much left for you to do. D would be good practice. You'll have to look up the what for D. Not KSP, K K A. Yeah. work on these. Tomorrow I'll be in, you saw I'll be here around 9 to 12 is a great time to come by, even earlier, even 9 to 1 or something, because all day tomorrow, I mean, just in lab, and PCHEM lab in the morning, right, Gen Chem lab in the afternoon, just standing around, and I can come by and we can work out some of these, right? So, have a good day.